It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Buccaneers and the Vikings. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Today, we've got an intriguing NFC matchup lined up here, as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. Well, Charles, September is here. The 2023 season just about to get started. So many storylines to pay attention to. What are you most keeping an eye on as the start of the season moves closer? Well, partner, I'm glad you asked because we're going to start, obviously, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. That's a huge story. How about Kansas City? Could they win their third title in five years? We know some teams are trying to get there. Buffalo, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, San Francisco, all should contend. And how about some of those sleeper teams? I think the Chargers of Pittsburgh and the AFC, Carolina, Detroit, and the NFC, it's going to be an exciting season. Joseph now ready to get this one started and we are underway from Minneapolis. And up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 and his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. The former number one overall pick has had his ups and downs in recent seasons, but he finished strong last year and inherits a really good offense in Tampa that should set him up for success. On the first snap, here's Mayfield. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time they were up to the challenge. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Here's Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Crowd getting in it a bit already. Here's an early third and ten. Now Mayfield. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 47. Mayfield off the play fake. Well, looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. The result, only four yards there on the play, and that'll make it second down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Going to the air again with Mayfield. And this is caught by Evans. And Evans will have a box first down as he'll be brought down at the 37. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They run for the first time here with Rashad White, and he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, 
They really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. On second down, they'll run with White, and he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Mayfield down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. In every game, we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. So look at this. Here's a field goal unit coming out, and he is going to need to bomb this one. And this is going to wind up left. Well struck, but it's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. That opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. It does especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. Well, they gave the 60-yarder a try, didn't make it, and now they're in a tough position defensively. This offense has it in midfield. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Cousins now from the 50. And this one is incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Cousins. In trouble, and he's taken down. He couldn't get away there on third down pressure too much and he sat for a loss of 12. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. Back deep for the box is Devin Tompkins. Fielded just inside the 20. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. Here's second and seven now from the 28. They keep it on the ground, White again. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. That's a very nice game there, a confidence building run. Love the execution up front and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. First down, here's White. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Marcus Davenport brought him down. The UTS.
USA product. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Throwing Mayfield. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. They will run with White out of the shotgun. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They run straight ahead here with White. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Mayfield looks to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 22-yard line. And a nice gain at 21 yards. Mayfield on play action. And he's got his man in stride, complete. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Mayfield now on second down. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And the Buccaneers are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They wanted to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit in the first quarter. Now they are set up first and goal. Mayfield to throw it. That one tipped, and it's incomplete. But good hands there defensively, and it's second down. You can't give some credit there, able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. On second down, it's Vaughn. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down about the two. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal for the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something to develop slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. White. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. And a loss of three to bring up four. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. Kick is right there. It's good. And the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. Well, both teams kind of feeling each other out here. And now after three drives, we have a score with that field goal. Yeah, they're still waiting for their breakout drive to come to them, all right? They're using the playbook well. They're looking for that extra section that says touchdowns instead of field goals. But they'll take the three for now and try and get set up for more later.
After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like in the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way, just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went three and out. Have that opportunity. <laughs> no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. So, Charles, defensively here, you're going up against a veteran quarterback. He's got a lot of know-how, a ton of savvy, but guy who's not the most mobile of quarterbacks what's the plan of attack you spend all week pumping up your defensive front your defensive tackles your defensive ends your outside linebackers the guys who go after the quarterback the most because you know that he's not going to run and beat you consistently throughout the game you can rush more aggressively off the edge and even up the middle because even if he evades you he's not going to go very far you have a lot more confidence going after him in the pocket Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it, and they do so and pick up a first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Cousins again. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Second down and three. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time, they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. Nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they go to work on a first and goal. Throwing Cousins. This goes out wide from Madison. Touchdown, Vikings! Alexander Madison from eight yards out, and the Vikings have taken the lead. Well, we know he has decent hands out of the backfield. That's the first time, Charles, they've targeted him in the passing game, and it pays dividends. And I love the design, too, because they kept him in the backfield, made the defense think run first before they swung him out of there, and you're right. With his hands, they might want to throw it to him just a little bit more. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Now 
Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This taken in right around the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Second and seven. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Palmer. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness there's a premium for all of that now. Now a give up the middle. This is White. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards a carry at the moment. Here now, second and four. They go with White on the counter. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Four yards the pick up, first down. It's been a rough go on the ground throughout the entire game, but after a run like that, they may have found the spark to get their offense kick-started. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Mayfield. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Chris Godwin, 49 yards. And the Buccaneers have regained the lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. Five plays there on that drive. And it's Chris Godwin who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Kenny Nwagu now out of his end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field. The returns on the last drive, pretty good. Seven for seven, touchdown pass. Probably take that, right? I would say so. I mean, when you're cutting them apart that way, feeling so accurate, so confident going downfield, and then able to culminate by putting it in the end zone. Oh, yeah. He's feeling real good right now. Now he'll try to carry that over to this drive. 23 yards, the final tally. Cousins. A throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Cousins to throw it. 
He'll get this underneath to Madison, and he'll get it down here to the 43. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. They'll throw again. Cousins. And to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 25-yard line. 18 yards the game for number 18. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And they'll send the slot in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Cousins. That is caught, and they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 18 yards the game for number 18. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle, and they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive, and even better than that, set them up for the first to goal. Here's Madison running on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. The free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? Here's Madison getting it again on second. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. And a nice job defensively to keep him out of the end zone. He's trying to get a second touchdown already in the first half. They had that one earlier, was bidding for a second. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and goal. Madison is in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Joseph now to have the PAT. And that makes it 14-10. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The attention shifting back to Chris Godwood and the rest of the Tampa offense. He's up near 100 yards now here in the second quarter, but his team's down through no fault of his own. I mean, <laughs> what a nice game he's having so far. They've got to keep finding ways to get him the football. Don't get away from that. Figure out where things are going wrong with the rest of the team. They'll be hoping to hit that 100-yard mark on this drive. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Second down. 
Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field and popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. On third down, Mayfield. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Brandon Powell, deep for Minnesota. And take it right at the 35. That'll go as a 39-yard punt. Give him nine on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. They're starting to pull away with this one. Early on that first quarter, they didn't look so great offensively. What has changed? Sometimes it's just a matter of doing what you plan to do better. Sometimes you just put that all together and you execute. Other times, it's just in a simple adjustment in your game plan, finding a spot that maybe was a little weaker than maybe you thought, and going to that. So many different things, so many different ways, but right now, you gotta like what they're doing. They have put distance between themselves and their opponent. Looking to add on here in the second quarter. Cousins now. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. The big Vita Vea pushing his way through to wind up with a sack. Nice play by Vea, one of the biggest names and biggest players in the NFL, and someone who took big strides as a pass rusher last season. A nice campaign with six and a half sacks and plays the run oh so well. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Looking to throw. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. A first down throw from Mayfield. The pass is caught by Kate Otten and brought down, but not before reaching the 25. 10 yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. They'll go up the middle with White. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 48 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Nothing too fancy, just to carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against his 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job by the center. Got a little help from one of his friends playing guard. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. Second down, Mayfield. Throw left side, hauled in by Otten. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 35. A good pick up there, 26 yards. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 35-yard line. 
Mayfield throw on target to Godwin here. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it's second down. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much game than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip tap, tip tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you, plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep him off the scoreboard here. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Mayfield with it once more. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Credit that sack to Marcus Davenport. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here's Jake Camarda now. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half, more than a minute. And we'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage, either run another play or clock it and start over again. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Quickly to Addison here. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Third down and 13. Addison will go in motion left. Now they show jet sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Out route and the ball is caught by Godwin. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Play of the half, Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game.
As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Brandon, back to you, too, in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a running back, Alexander Madison, who put together a solid first half. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game, as he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. have to like their position they've got the lead they get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half and they will wrangle them down a couple yards shy of the 30 and the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter and they've got the lead CD what do you think the message was at halftime I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. I'm sure a lot of time was spent in the locker room, Charles, with talking with his defense about setting a tone here in the third quarter when you're down on the scoreboard. A sack like that, maybe that can get them going. Yeah, you have to believe exactly what you just said, that they got together and said, let's be some change agents here. Let's go ahead and turn things around. Let's be the force that gets us going here in the second half and puts us in a position to find a way to win the game. Meanwhile, Cousins' throw pulled in by Jefferson. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected. But this is a good pickup here for the first down. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Mayfield on play action. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. And they get 17 more on that one and another first down. A couple of first downs right in succession. And this is an offense that can really use a good drive. And they're off to a fast start here. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On a handoff, it's White. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Going with White here, toss left. 
70 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. They go play action. Mayfield. This is caught by Evans. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. White. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close. Sneak it. I don't think even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Vaughn will score. Touchdown, Buccaneers. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And it's now 17-14. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. There's a glimpse of Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, as he and the Minnesota Vikings return back here on offense. He's been a load for them to handle defensively. I know that much. Well, look at him. He's got seven catches on the game, and he's starting to shred them a little bit because... Not only is he catching him, he's picking up good yardage, keeping the chains moving, ball control, you name it. This big guy, what did you say? He's been a load for them to handle? That's right. He's Agreed. A, a seven catches, as you said, over 100 yards. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Play fake. Cousins. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. Shaquille Barrett collapses the pocket and drops him for a loss of three. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. And here's Ryan right now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. Get a look at receiver Chris Godwin as this offense returns for their next drive. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. It's like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Well, certainly going to be a lot tougher adding a touchdown to that lead now since they're facing second and 20-plus. Big-time sack to start the drive and put the opponent way back. Let's see what kind of play call they come up with here.
Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Throwing Mayfield. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. It's a gain of 35. Well, my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. Going right side is White, and he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. This defense, tough to run against, and those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. Here's third and six. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Mike Evans, 47 yards, and they are able to add on to their advantage. When you give up a long touchdown drive, you're looking for a silver lining. In this case, it's the fact that your offense had a chance to rest, and now they can come out in the field charged up and ready to go. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Taking it about the one. And he returns this to the 22. And out now come the Vikings. They're down now 24-14. Work to do as they come up on a first and 10. Cousins. Pressure too much. Down he goes. Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. Second down, Cousins. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Cousins. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Cousins on first down. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And 
it'll be second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Wait, we got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Cousins again. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. And here's Ryan right now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And we shift to spotlighting Mike Evans. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that, because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Man, when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, makes, you do. Makes you get you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Here's Mayfield. Right back to Chris Godwin. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop it. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They defer to White out of the shotgun. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. On second down, they'll run with White. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. 82 yards on the ground for him so far. That's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running play on first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. When you run into slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to kick it away. Here's Powell on the return. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. 
Now a second down throw for Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And Jefferson's going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this up to the 32. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. Cousins to throw it. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. And they'll come up second and seven. Throwing his Cousins. Pass caught here by Osborne. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. They'll go Madison up the middle. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice, long, soaking hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. Oh, and yeah, once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. This offense so far on third down, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and nine. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 11. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He completes it to Evans. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that will bring up second down. Evans, a seven-yard pickup, brings up second and three at the 19-yard line. On the handoff, this is White. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. They're able to convert with a gain of four. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. Here's second and 10. On the give, it's White. And they're able to get 
this one across the 35. 96 yards rushing now on 23 carries so far. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell them to back off of being aggressive, but sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go over the century mark. Well, you got to give it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing yardage here. You're not worried about any of that. You just want to get him to the promised land for every runner. 100 yards or more in a game. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he's up past the 45-yard line. Seven yards on the quick slant and a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Mayfield, that's taken in by Palmer, and he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Come on. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Mayfield to throw it to Evans on the slant. Busting through contact. Just wasn't a huge hole there for him to operate. Stopped just inside the 35-yard line. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Mayfield off the play fake. There's Evans again, complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Now Mayfield. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Second and 10 now from the 27. Mayfield looks to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Palmer. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This will be a critical call. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They'll run for it. This is White. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. To throw Mayfield. And his throw here is incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. 
They run straight ahead here with White. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. A good start to the drive here as that's caught out on the left side. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. This is first and 10. First down, here's Cousins. Middle of the field to Jefferson. They'll come up now on second down. Again, it's Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. To throw, Cousins. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball, and I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. Keep on boys. You know what we need, baby. Here's second down and three. Deep work, you can't stop us. 
Now Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. Boy, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down now. Third and short yardage, Cousins. Flush to his right. Now he's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. And partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and it'll be a turnover on downs. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left. Two yards to go, second down. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. third down a run from white and he is going to have a bucks first down all smiles on that sideline that should be the one to do it well that second half charles a little bit different from the first not only did we have the lead change after intermission but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory and what's the old expression that's not quite how i saw it playing out in my head you know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half of the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise.